I know there are a lot of people, myself included, who often watch the leaders at the top. And when we see the leaders at the top, we realize they tend to get away with things that, well, we think they shouldn't get away with. In fact, they literally get away with murder sometimes and nobody holds them accountable. It seems like they will always get away with whatever they want to get away with because, well, who's going to hold them accountable? Who's big enough to tell them they're wrong and punish them for it? Is their justice ever coming? Well, that's what I want to talk about today on Leading Leaders. I know this isn't going to come as an utter shock to you, but it is true. <clears throat> I have feelings. I do. I have my own feelings. I have my own emotions. I also have, um, I have some opinions. I have my own opinions, and they may not be the same as your opinions. And I also have some ideas, unique ideas, ideas that maybe you've never had before. And I know that may come as a shock to some of you, but that's exactly what I want to talk about today on Leading Leaders. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. And that question of accountability is a really tough one to get a hold of because we always feel like, well, we should be accountable to ourselves. And we should. And we should be accountable at least to our team members, and we should. And we should be accountable to the people that we lead, the people whose lives we're responsible for speaking into, influencing, helping them make decisions, sometimes even making decisions for them. But the question of accountability is different in this aspect. Are you accountable to or accountable for? Are you accountable to or are you accountable for? So an example might be, as a parent, if your child does something illegal or destructive or harmful to someone else, I, as a perfect example, when I was a kid, I think I was, what, maybe 12, and a friend and I were standing in the front yard just throwing rocks across the street into an empty field. I mean, there was nothing in that field. And we had thrown rocks for probably 30 minutes as she and I just sat there and talked. And at some point, I went to throw a rock and she turned to say something at the same time, and the rock caught the corner of her glasses right off her. It didn't hit her at all, but it hit the corner of her glasses, shattered her glasses. Fortunately, she didn't get any glass in her eye. But her glasses were like three days old and they were a couple hundred bucks. And back in the 80s when this happened, that was a lot of money. Well, who paid for that? I didn't have a couple of hundred bucks at 12 years old. But my mother's homeowner's insurance was accountable for my behavior. And so her homeowner's insurance paid for the glasses for the little girl to get new glasses. That's what it means to be accountable for. If you're a parent and you have a teen driver who's just started driving and they crash the car, your insurance has to pay for that. A until they are, according to the uh, Affordable Care Act, until they're 25 years old, if you have health insurance, which you're required by the Affordable Care Act, to have, then they are also covered under your health insurance. So until their 25th birthday, you provide all of their health care, emergency room visits and sick days and all of that kind of stuff you are accountable for as a parent. But the minute they turn 25 or in some cases 18 and they're legal adults and they make decisions on their own, at that moment, you're not accountable for them in the same legal sense, but you're still accountable to them. So what does it mean to be accountable to? Well, that's when someone looks at the behavior that you have, the way you conduct yourself, the conversations you have, the, the things that you do, legal or otherwise, and you have to answer for those things by saying, I'm guilty, I did it wrong, I did parenting wrong, I did paying taxes wrong, I did paying the bills late wrong, I bounced a few checks, I'm accountable, I did that, it was me, I'll take my lumps, whatever those lumps are. Sometimes it's a pat on the hand, sometimes it's a hug from your child who says, I forgive you, daddy, and you move on down the road, and it's not that big a deal. But sometimes, especially if it's something like taxes, that could be dollars in fines, tens of thousands of dollars in fines, or even time in jail if you haven't held yourself accountable to paying your taxes on time. But see, there's another level of accountability that, that especially in the political elites or in the, the C-level executives. You get people who work far enough up into the organization, the chairman of the board, the founder, the president, the CEO or FO or EO or IO or whatever kind of OOs there are. And the C-level suite, the board presidents, etc., sometimes think, who do I answer to? 
Well, in a stakeholder system versus a shareholder system, in a shareholder system, your answer, answer to the board and to those who hold stock. So if there's a stockholder in the company of whatever percentage your bylaws say, who doesn't like the fact that you take 15 days of vacation every year, and that person who by the bylaws has a voting percentage in your board, they can raise their hand and say, I'm a stockholder. I don't like the fact that you go to Barbados twice a year. Uh, I, I want to see that change. Now, will it actually happen? Maybe, maybe not. But if they were to say, I don't like this product that you sell, and they can get enough other people who are stockholders to petition it, you might actually lose your job as chairman of the board or the CEO of the company you founded if enough stockholders hold you accountable for your behavior. Enron is a good example. Do some reading on that, and you're going to figure out what I'm talking about. Everybody at Enron was held accountable eventually, both by the law and by the generally acceptable accounting practices, which were completely amended because of the behavior at Enron. What Enron did wasn't technically, technically illegal at the time they did it, but it was immoral, and it was wrong. And they were held accountable by laws that were written after what they did were put in place, and then they were held accountable for those laws. Again, look it up, strange case, very, very powerful. But there were a lot of people who were caught up in that, who lost their retirements, lost their investments, lost everything, some of them their careers, because of decisions made by people at high levels of influence and leadership who felt like, nobody can hold me accountable. I'm the top dog. Who do I answer to? Now, in stockholder world, in stock investors, the shareholder is the primary final arbiter of what's right and what's wrong. They, by voting their stock, will make a decision that the board may or may not agree with, but if there's enough stockholders and if somebody has enough controlling interest, they can change the game pretty significantly. Well, let's shift over to the newer monetary theory called shareholder, excuse me, stock, stakeholder, not shareholder, not stockholder, but stakeholder. These are people who feel like, I have a vested interest in the success of your company because uh, your company operates in my country. Maybe they think I have a vested interest because your company, the type of business that it does, impacts uh, economies around the world in the world of, I don't know, say energy or medicine or electronics, technology. So if you're in any one of those fields and what you do isn't just impacting your local community and your state, you know, if you're a baker, for an example, and you make cakes, your local community might care about what kind of cakes you make or don't make. There might be people in your community who are offended by that. And if they make enough of a fuss, they are stakeholders in your business. They can tell the community, they can tell the media, they can tell the social media. They can even file lawsuits and say, you will make the kind of cakes we want you to make or you'll be out of business cancel culture. Now, if you're a big enough company, like a, a global tech company, and what you do in your company makes a decision or an impact in not just the county or the city or the community that you do business in, but in the nation or in multiple nations or literally around the globe, as many tech companies do today, well, then your stakeholders are much broader than that. And now, the culture, the society at large, becomes the one that holds you accountable. But we still have this philosophy among a lot of leaders that I'm at the top, I'm the top dog, I make the final decision, there is no arbiter greater than me to decide that what I did was right or wrong. We especially find this in governments. We especially find this in the world of politics. People think, well, when I was the dog catcher versus when I was the mayor versus the sheriff versus a judge, versus a district judge or a state Supreme Court or an attorney general or a governor. And they just keep working their way all the way up, the senator and, and representative and Congress. And now that they're in Congress, they feel like they're untouchable. They're not held accountable by anybody. I mean, who would they answer to? The president? Well, they leave every four years. Yeah, let that settle in for a minute. How many people have been elected to office who have been in office longer than four, five, six, seven presidents? There's a handful of them. But how many people have jobs in government capacities that make decisions about the laws you have to abide by, the rules that you have to live by, the places that you live, the energy or type of energy that you can have and how much of it, the type of food that you can buy and how much of it, the places that you can go and when, 
people that make those decisions that were never elected. And people that make those decisions that often tell the president, we're not doing that. Even if there's a direct order, an executive order, or a congressional bill, and they say, we're just not doing that. Who holds those people accountable? And, and when? Is there justice ever coming for, for all the decisions they made that impacted your daily life and my daily life that turns out they got it wrong? At what point will they be held accountable? Well, see, there's, there's one thing that I firmly believe, and I believe that our founding fathers held this concept dearly as well. When the question comes to when will they be held accountable, the answer is firmly uh, in time in time. Now, that alone is a perplexing answer, because in time might mean, like, it's just a matter of time, any, any minute. It could, it could be next week, it could be tomorrow. It could be that the shoe's going to drop like all the people at CNN who started losing their jobs because they felt like they were untouchable. They reached a place where they felt like, nobody's going to hold me accountable for my behavior. I can do whatever I want to. And then they got caught. And they've lost careers. They've lost long-term jobs they've had for decades and millions of dollars in income because in time they were caught. In time, what you've done wrong will always find you out. Always. Every time. Why? Well, because like our founding fathers said, the reason that we elect the officials that we do and we refresh them on a regular basis, I don't remember exactly whose quote it was. If you remember, put this in the comments. Somebody said politicians like diapers need change on a regular basis. And for the same reason. When we have bureaucrats that are in, in positions of power but not in office, they can't be elected out of office. We can't just put somebody else in there. But what we can do is elect new officials who will appoint someone to replace them. They can be fired. And sometimes they desperately need to be. Those are decisions we have to make. But let's go one step further than that. Who holds them accountable when the American people don't? Who holds them accountable when the stakeholders, the people whose lives are being affected every day by the decisions they make, when they don't hold them accountable, who does? Who puts them in their place? Who says, that's enough of that, and you're going to have to pay for this? Well, you might look at a Jeffrey Epstein with three or four decades of uh, miscreant behavior. Finally, he goes to jail. And in less than 48 hours, apparently he's gone from the earth. Is that justice? I don't know. The people who had been tortured by him never got a chance to see him pay the price for what he did. He spent 48 hours in jail. I don't know if you can call that justice or not. But the Founding Fathers held another philosophy, which I hold firmly as well. And that is, there is an arbiter who sits way above any elected official who sits way above every other form of accountability. It's not about going to jail. It's not about the stockholders or the stakeholders saying, sorry, we're not going to put up with that anymore. No, there's a final arbiter who sits at the back watching everything that's happening that knows every detail of right and wrong and is not only in a position of power and authority to correct the wrongs, but the ultimate arbiter of justice as well. See, our founding fathers actually wrote it into the documents that they created around our country that said, if we are good people, then we will be a favored nation. If we do things well, in fact, Alexis de Tocqueville actually said it, the reason this country is as incredible as it is, is because it's not just doing well, it's doing good. They're good people. They have good morals. They have a good foundation. And that foundation is in faith. That foundation is in the idea that there is a God who gives all men their rights, and that God is the final arbiter of justice. Sometimes we miss that daily representation of justice. We feel like, well, so-and-so has gotten away with it. They're not going to jail. They, they've never been arrested for all the bad things that they've done. They're, they've never had to pay a price for what they did to me or to my family or for the lives that were lost or the, the daily income that was impacted. They'll, they're just going to get away with it. Well, in time. They might get away with it today. It might seem like they've not been held accountable. In fact, they might even expire their days on this earth and still feel like, <laughs> I got away with it. But if my philosophy is right, if my faith informs me the way that I believe it does, if there is a God in heaven, 
then there's also a hell. And trust me, my friends, justice is coming. It's his other name. He is the king of kings and the lord of all lords. He's also the god of justice. And you might think right now I've gotten away with it, but just remind yourself, like when the nanny cam comes back six months later and you realize you're in the middle of a divorce because you thought nobody caught you cheating, when you were 10 years old and you stole those candies and you thought nobody caught you and then dad drug you back in by your ears and made you take them back or pay for them, when you think you've gotten away with it, there's always someone watching. And I don't care what level of leadership you're at. If you're the 15-year-old head cheerleader or the captain of the football team, or if you're the CEO who founded the company 35 years ago, if you think you've reached a place of untouchable, just remember, in time. Justice is coming in time. And I hope for your sake that it comes in a time that you're still alive and breathing to say, I'm sorry, because at the moment that you're no longer alive and breathing, in time changes to in eternity. And if you find yourself that leader who has led in a way that you will be held accountable for the mistakes that you've made, the pain that you've caused, the damage that you've done, and you don't make amends for that in time, then you will make amends for that in eternity and for eternity. This is a really heavy lesson for leading leaders. I know that. But it, I want you to have both the consolation, the peace, and the power to know that if you're leading people, you will be held accountable. It may not be today, and it may not be by anybody you recognize as an authority over your life, but eventually you will be held accountable. I also want you to have the peace of knowing that if you have been betrayed by a leader, if you've been taken advantage of, if you've been abused, if you've been neglected by anyone who has authority in your life, and you feel like, I've been bamboozled, and I cannot get justice. There's no justice for the little guy like me. If you feel like the flea that's in the man age jar and you can only jump as far as that lid and you've been restricted all your life, the barrier has been over your head all your life, know this. In time, the justice is coming. And those who refuse to admit their wrong and be held accountable for their bad deeds in time will pay for those in eternity. It may not be your justice to mete out, but justice is coming. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.